What's up, people? I am back for a more relaxed video where I'm actually talking about fun stuff again. But today, we're continuing on with the Expendables franchise with uh, Expendables 2, which came out 2012, so two years after the first. I gotta say, man, I remember watching this one in theaters with my, my best friend. I really loved it. It was like the first one, but on steroids. I think, like... If I'm going to be honest, the first one's probably a better story, but I do like this one a bit better. I just love the team dynamic in this one, just because you don't have the whole gunner, you know, going rogue thing in this one. You know, he's part of the team. The only thing I don't really like is just Jet Li kind of, he just fucks off. Like, he takes the doctor guy they save in the beginning, and then he just disappears. I didn't really, I'm not a big fan of that, but... I at least maybe have him pop up in the end. I was, I would have been fine with that if he was gone for most of the movie and then you have him pop up in the end. But I'll talk about that more later. But overall, this is a fun movie. Um, I thought Liam Hensworth, even though he, his death was actually very well executed. As uh, Billy the Kid was pretty good. The, um, you know, you're, you know, then you have the classic team like, you know, Barney's back, Lee's back, Toll Road's back, Kale Caesar's back, and my God, he's. I think he's a lot funnier in this one. Like, I love the one-liners in this, and I love that um, Stallone, not Stallone, Schwarzenegger and um, Willis were actually part of the movie. Like, you know, more in the end, but it was fun seeing them and Chuck Norris as Booker. Like, all these, like, characters just coming together. Yeah, I'm not coming in expecting the greatest story. So pretty much the premise is after um, saving a doctor from a couple of hostages in, I think it was Nepal, I could be fucking wrong. I just read the synopsis. I could be wrong about the, the country I read. I could be reading it, reading it wrong. But after saving a doctor, um, um, Mr. Church gives a mission to Barney that basically he has to retrieve this box um, from a crash plane in Albania. And when he gets there, the villain... Um, Jean Vallant, I love, and I love how it's a play on the word villain. I didn't catch on, on to that for a while. And, and it was Jean-Claude Van Damme, I gotta say. He's not as charismatic as, let's say, like, Eric Roberts was, but I thought he was a pretty good villain in this. You know, it was cool, it was interesting, because they could have just easily, because he was a, pretty much a, a big action star, too, and he was always the good guy. So I'm surprised they could have just as easily just made him part of the team, but I'm actually happy they didn't. And he was a fun villain. And, you know, he, 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 he gave us the line, don't challenge me. And, and, yeah, he kills Billy, gets the box, which is actually um, has a location to plutonium that they're trying to get. And and I thought Maggie Chan, Maggie Chen, um, who was um, the person Church sent in, alongside the mission i thought she was a cool like new character and to be fair she works because she's an actual like martial artist i don't know her name but i think she's in like other martial arts movies because I, I recognize her face and it's like but uh according to hollywood you didn't have strong women before 2015 but anyway but like what makes this movie so good is just the action set pieces are bigger. It does what a sequel should do, especially an action sequel. It should always be bigger explosions, bigger kill scenes, and I think there's a lot of them. Especially in the beginning. That, even though he dies, I thought his character Billy the Kid got some solid snipe kills in the beginning. Like He snipes literally a dude's like head completely like off. It was fucking crazy. But yeah. But yeah, this is a fun movie. I would give this one like a, a 9.5 out of 10. I think it's a fun sequel. Um, it continues the story very well. And it, it does, it ends in a way where it could end here if they never, let's say, made Expendables 3, but they did. But uh, yeah, I definitely recommend this one. If you want a fun sequel, you want a, a very solid bad guy, you got, you got some really good one-liners in this one. Like some really good ones. Especially the one which is later in the movie between Bruce Willis and Schwarzenegger. It's fucking great. Hold on. Should have did this before the video started. Sorry. Anyway. Um, 
as usual, I'm going to kick it off. It opens up. The <coughs> film opens up. <coughs> the Expendables going into Paul. <coughs> Because <clears throat> they have to retrieve a doctor named Dr. Zal, and we get like a fun action sequence, and then they're like in this tank thing. And oh my god, the vehicles were cool. It's a cool little design. I kind of wish they used them again, but they only used them in this scene. But <clears throat> it took a bunch of people out. We got some solid head kills. Um, they managed to get the doctor, and this is where we get the, the, the person that. The <clears throat> Um, the people they end up, <coughs> but they end up finding a uh, trench who's a rival of of Barney's. I love their little scenes together, man. And we even get like fucking Terry Crews making a terminated joke. I love the one like the the thing is do is they break the fourth wall of several times in this movie, but it's not like it's done really quick and then they go back into the fight. Like, that is, if you're going to do fourth wall breaking and even just comedy, that is how it should be done. It should just be a quick moment thing and then back to the fight. You know, not, okay, let's just drag this joke on. Like, I like that. So the the team evacuates, and this is where we meet um, new member Billy the Kid, who's uh, Barney's protege. He's actually a really solid character, and he had a fun arc. And Granted, he's, we don't really see him a whole lot, because after this, he pretty much gets a little bit of an arc, and then he dies, but it's actually done really well. And, yeah, so we, um, they get boats. Well, Barney and um, Lee make it back to the plane. The other, the team are on um on a, in water, and they're having a water fight, and you see Billy just... This is the scene where you see him, like, snipe a dude's head off, like, God, some of these the kills in this movie, man. It's fucking intense. I think it almost goes harder than the first. And the first one had some crazy kills, too. But, uh, yeah. So, Barney ends up saving them, uh, the team. And then they evacuate. And um, they head back to, I think it was New Orleans. Yes, New Orleans. And we have, like, a party scene. You know, kind of similar to the first movie. You know, where you see the team interact. Oh, before that, this is where we see... Jet Li leave with... Oh, I, sh I fucking forgot. I, I, I'm, I, I'm criminal. Jet Li had like a... Su Granted, yes, he he does dip early in the movie, but we do get at least like a dope fight scene when he just goes in and cuts a bed against a couple of dudes, like stabbing dudes in the neck. He's like punching the shit out of one dude. It's crazy. It's like, I'm like, God damn, this is like crazy Jet Li. So it was at least cool we got to see some fights, but then, yeah. So he gets on the plane and he takes doctors out back to China. But it's like, I would have liked to at least have him come back in the end. He should have at least come back in that final act. Like, have him come back with Booker and Trent. Oh, yeah, when Trench and, uh, well, not Trench, when Church shows up in the end as for the Calvary. He, have him with him. I didn't really like that he just is gone. He just kind of fucks off. I don't know if he comes back in the third one, and maybe he does, but... I'm just kind of disappointed because he's such a... I really liked his character in, this, in the first one. It's not just because... And yeah, I'll admit, it's partially just because I'm a big Jet Li guy. And it doesn't, like, kill the movie or anything. The movie's so awesome. It's just... It's a little disappointed. But we at least got a, a dope fight scene out of him, though, before he, you know, left the movie. So after that, they get back to New Orleans. We get a fun scene. We kind of get some continued continuity. You know, Barney's giving... Lee shit because he's about to marry um Charisma Carpenter's character. I don't remember her name. Lacey. He's about to marry Lacey and he mentions she cheated on him. I love the like just the the especially between those two, man. Like Barney and Lee had like such a genuine friendship. And that's like the problem now, man. You it's like it's it'd be crazy. it's crazy. Like if Expendables had only would be you know, it would be crazy if like if Expendables had came out like Years later, it probably would not be the same movie. It's crazy. But yeah, it's a fun movie. I love the scenes. Like Besides like the action stuff, I really just love the scenes where the team's just bannering back and forth. And it's so much more natural in this, and this is where we learn. It's actually a real-life thing, because Dolph Lundgren's like, actually really fucking smart. Like, he's, like, you know, MI. I don't... I think it's MIT in real life. Like, that's his actual, like, credentials and shit. Like, that's crazy. So we can, you know, but they make it for a joke. And it's like, this is the time for it. 
so yeah so um and then barney has a scene with um uh with uh billy you know billy talks about it. he basically wants to give it wants to retire so he can you know be with his girl Sophia, and he wants to, like, he has, like, this no, and it's, like, he get it's cool how they give him a bit of a backstory, even though he's not gonna die long after this, but it's always cool, like, it's fine if you kill a character early, but you give him enough story that it's still, and he's, act, and I, I gotta give it to Liam, Liam, uh, Hemsworth's, uh, Chris Hemsworth's brother, I thought he did pretty well in this, for the role he had, um, and then, yeah, he gets the mission from church, I, I do love Bruce Willis's church, though, the banter between the two. Like, he's, like, he has this, like, he's an FBI guy, or CIA guy, but he it just, he feels like fucking, like a mob boss in a way. But yeah, so he gives him the mission, and he has to retrieve this box, and that he's gonna send in uh, one of his best, uh, um, people, which is, uh, Maggie, and then, and then after that, this, we get a quick scene between him and Maggie, and Maggie's a cool character. I, I thought she was a fun character throughout. And this is how you do a female character, Hollywood, in a movie like this. Like, yeah, she was... Because, yeah, she's trained. Because I've, I've seen her in other, like, kung fu movies. Or martial arts movies, I'll just say. But it's like... She's not... Even then, though, she's still using a gun. Like, they, it shows you that realism. Granted, realism in this movie isn't, like... All the way, all the time, but there's some times where it isn't. There are times like, yeah, these guys should be dead, but anyway. So yeah, we get a little bit of a of one on one really quick between her and and uh, Barney, and I do like that in this movie too. They didn't force it; like you could tell there was a little like attraction there, but they didn't force it throughout the movie. Like you could tell there's like a little thing there, but they don't like force it so yeah the team then travel to um albania to get the box and then yeah we get a one last scene of billy talking about like what he did as a uh, in the military we get a little funny scene where gunner's trying to hit on her it's like that's what i do like about these movies is like i'm gonna keep mentioning is the banter is perfect it's just you could tell these guys have known each other. I should have said that's another thing I should have mentioned in the first movie when I reviewed the first movie. Like, these guys you could tell have already known each other. Like, they felt like they don't know each other. I don't know if in actuality, maybe in real life they know each other. Maybe that's why it's so, it comes off so natural. Like, like these guys are actually like a, a unit. So they land. They retrieve the box, but, and Billy, the kid, is supposed to be like their lookout. And when they come back, they come back and see that Billy's been captured by the Sangs. And this is where we meet Sheen Valon. And I actually do like this opening scene. They make him like a, a dope villain. He's like what an action villain of, especially of that, like the 80s. Because that's what these movies like always are supposed to are capturing is that 80s and 90s action movie feel. And that's what, a, that's why I really, I mean, even the villain's name is Villan. You know, play on villain. And I thought he did a pretty good job of torturing. I mean, he, he basically forces them to put their guns down. And... And uh, he takes Barney's knife. Well, not Barney's knife. Uh, the other guy's knife, who, uh, who was like one of his henchmen. And uh, after forcing them to give... That give him the the box. He kills Billy, and his his death's actually pretty sad because you think he's not going to do it, and then he like kicks the knife into his chest, and then yeah. So um, Valon walks off, you know, kind of all care, you know, charismatically, you know. I gotta give it to Jean Claude. He showed his hand as a good villain. He, I don't think he was as good as like Roberts in the last movie, but like especially in the asshole department. Like, I wanted Villan to die, but I more was like, part of me, necessary, not that I didn't want him to die, but it was also like, I just like Jean-Claude Van Damme. But I thought, I gotta, I gotta give it to him. He played a solid bad guy. Like, he did, he, he did what he was supposed to do. So, 
And he was a different type of bad guy. There's nothing wrong with, like, in these type of movies where you switch up the bad guy, you know, a little bit. You don't necessarily have the same type of bad guy. So, the team, um, Barry, this is at, before that, they, Maggie reveals what the box that is actually is, which is, uh, basically a map to, um, plutonium that was hidden. Yeah, and and Valon wants to sell it. So, and you know, I do kind of miss the days when you did have a villain that, yeah, there's no backstory, there's no anything. He's just, I'm a bad guy, and like, oh, I'm an arms dealer, or I'm a, uh, an ex CIA guy who wants to go on my own, like Eric Roberts was in the last movie. Like, I do kind of, that's why I do think these movies are an example of good at modern action movies because they keep the 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 like the like heart of those old action movies but you know they modernize it a bit like the effects are gonna be better and and stuff like that so yeah the team barry um billy the kid we we have a really really good funeral scene where he reads um the letter he was gonna give to sophia it's actually pretty sad to be honest like um then they tr um the team finds a little town and we get a fun scene of um Lee and uh Barney beating up some dudes at a pub and they basically take over the pub and make that like their base and and uh we get like some more banter between the team and that's like the like I really love these moments in these those moments in these movies is it's just cuz like it's a nice little quiet point, you know? And you could tell, like, he, um, Barney's starting to grow a little thing for Maggie, but they're keeping it. They don't force it. Like, that's the thing. If they, they did Expendables now, they would have forced the whole love story. So, yeah, we get some banter. And then, yeah, the, the team sleep for the night. And then the next morning, the Sangs with a, armed with a tank show up and basically attack them. And the team fight, but they end up running out of ammo. But uh, one of uh, Barney's uh, old uh, associates, Booker, shows up, played by um, Chuck Norris, takes him out. And my God, it, this, this whole scene is fucking great. <laughs> I love his whole entrance. And they play like the Walker, Texas music. It's so fucking great. And uh, he gives them some, we get some banter between him and Barney. And then he gives Barney some info that there's a little town that actually is against um, Valon. And they have to travel there. While while this is happening, Valon and his people are traveling to the location of the plutonium and they're starting to take it. I, I, I like him as a villain. I think he, he isn't as like charismatic as like Eric Roberts was. But that's fine. There's nothing wrong with changing up the villains every now and then. You know, I'm not against that. So... The team travels to this little town and um, basically you could tell a lot of people are like locked up or being forced to work for the Sangs. And that includes a lot of the, like the male people. So in this part of the town, like the women basically have to protect their children. But uh, once again, strong women didn't, didn't exist until Ray though. But, and it was done in like, in a, in a perfect way. And then, they ask the team to, like, help, and initially the team, like, doesn't because they wanted to kind of, like, not. But then they see that this, um, Villan, Villan's forces show up. And then the, the team hides in, like, gear. We get, like, a dope action scene where, um, Lee shows up and he's acting like a priest and he looks, like, straight out of, like, Assassin's Creed and, like, and he basically, yeah, he gets all these blades and he just starts taking these dudes. I'm like, God, the action scenes are so, so good in these movies. And then, yeah, the team starts taking the, um, the Lon's forces out. And then, yeah, and we get a funny, um, rest in pieces <laughs> from Barney when he kills them all. And then, um, they try to, they manage to locate the plutonium, but, um, Villan and his forces managed to evacuate in time, but they 
had a Villan had a backup plan where he basically had a C like I'll just say explosives blow up and basically lock the team and um, the the villagers in 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 a rubble. But we get a a funny scene from Gunner trying to make a bomb and talk a bunch of science shit. It's fucking funny. I really like Dolph in this movie. That's why I'm like. Don't know. I like the first one, but I like that in this one we don't have the whole Gunner Rogue story, and he was just a part of the team. That's why I really like it. And it you know, because I think Dolph, he was one of my favorite parts of the first one was was him, and then like yeah, they did that whole thing, and he wasn't even part of the third act, so it was kind of cool to see him in this movie be a different character. And these characters have an arc, you know, and it's crazy because action movies always get these, especially the action movie. This movie's basically these movies are inspired by always get the whole you know narrative oh they're just dumb action movies there's no arc but a lot of these characters do have an arc like especially compared to a lot of movies now where i would even say there's no real arc in, in anything so yeah so gunner tries to the blow up do an explosion but it doesn't work but trench shows up with like a, a digger and uh we get the odd back which was pretty funny. And um, Church shows up and basically says that, yeah, we're going to go get Milan. And uh, so does Booker come back. Basically, everybody's ready. And yeah, Milan shows up. We get a big firefight in the end. And uh, yeah, this action scene is like, this whole action set piece is great. The team starts taking on Milan's forces. They manage to make their way in while Milan runs off and uh and i also do like that this one isn't a rescue mission he just wants like barney just wants revenge for what happened to billy the kid like he just wants revenge and i think that works so much better i'm not saying i didn't like what happened with the uh, sandra in the first one but that the first one was just a chase to try to get sandra back i really like it this one it was just he wants fucking balance head for what he did to his homie you know just pure revenge so, we get some nice banter between the two while, uh, while, um, Ross goes after Valon. We get some banter between, um, Trench and, uh, Church. And my God, this is, like, probably my favorite, like, one-liner in the whole movie. You get, Schwarzenegger's gonna do his typical, I'll be back, and then he got fucking, fucking Church stops him midway through and is like, no, you've been back enough, I'll be back. <laughs> fucking great. And then, yeah, um, big shootout. He comes back with a car and fucking Trench opens the door and he breaks it. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, the humor in this movie is fucking gold. Um, so Valon runs off and then we get a fight between um, Lee and Valon's main, I'm just going to say his knife blade guy. We get a battle of the blade guys, but um, Lee uses uh, his brass knuckles and basically punches the dude into the fucking... Because the helicopter, the, the back part of the helicopter has the the rudder still going, and my god, it chops him up, man. It was it was pretty fucking brutal. So Maggie helps take out a couple of guys with um Barney, and then Barney says, Hey, stay here, I'm gonna go kill him. And basically says, If I don't come back, shoot him. So we get the final fight between him and Balan. It was actually pretty good. I wanted it to be a bit longer, but I get it. Um, Jean-Claude Van Damme is a bit up there, like, and maybe, like, isn't as, like, I still think in this movie, he's still pretty in shape, but, like, Stallone, like, even now, and keep in mind, this movie's 2012, even now still looks like a tank, and maybe it just, Jean couldn't go that long, I just think the fight, I wish, was a bit longer, maybe, like, and I'm gonna mean a bit longer, maybe, like, another five minutes, because I feel like this fight was a bit short, it was only, like, I think it was, like, Five minutes it was still a good fight though you know the lawn talking shit to him basically saying are you a sheep and you're gonna kill me with your hand or you're gonna kill me with your, kill me like a man with your hands and then he got fucking stallone i'm not gonna lie his line was pretty fucking cold too i'm gonna man you up real good <laughs> it's like oh shit god yeah the back and forth between the two was pretty good so yeah we get a pretty good fight Valon gets a he get he does take a couple of licks though, 
But Valon does get some kicks in, too, though. We do get the signature uh, Jean-Claude kicks. We got to get those in there. And um, he, he then takes Barney's knife, and then Barney uses the chain. He does beat the shit out of... Barney does beat the shit out of Valon with the chain. It's like, holy shit. He gets his knife back, and he does essentially the fucking Mortal Kombat. He does the fucking Scorpion. He uses the chain and grabs Valon, brings him over, and because Valon throughout the fight was like, what was that kid's name I killed? I don't even remember. And then Barney's like, Billy, and then he like stabs the shit out of him. And then he comes back out, asks Maggie, do you know how to carve a turkey? And then he comes back with Valon's head <laughs> to Trench and Church. And Trench and Church give him some props. And Trench is, not Trench, Church is like, a little extreme, but really. <laughs> and then Maggie asks if she can join the Expendables. And basically, he almost essentially asks him if she can be with him. But he feels like he's too much of a danger for her to be with him. So she doesn't, he doesn't take her, but... We do get a solid goodbye. We get a fun ending, and we even get a joke. Um, but uh, yeah, so Barney, because after what happened, yeah, the plane gets destroyed, um, their original plane. Because um, there's a scene where they're trying to fly away with um, the villagers, and it crashes. So they get a new plane um, handed by church, and they make a joke about that, like, we should be in a, re not a retirement, or we're getting, basically we're getting too old. And then fucking Trench was like, so are we. And then um, they uh, the team cheers for uh, Billy one more last time, and then the movie ends. Expendables 2, was, this is what a sequel should be, man. It, it, it's a perfect sequel, especially to this movie. The dynamic between the team is what makes these movies. And I hope it continues that in the third one. I know, I hear from what I've seen a couple of reviews from the third one, is that... They the theatrical cut is PG thirteen. I don't know why they did that when literally all these action stars are known for R rated movies, like all of them: Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis, Statham. Like all of them are R. And then even like Mel Gibson, who was in like Lethal Weapon, that's R rated. I don't understand why they. I it's these weird execs who think like, well, PG thirteen means more money. They're so caught up because. This was pre-Joker, because Expendables 3 was like 2014, so this was, there was no Joker. They were going off of the whole, if it's R-rated, it's going to be limited. Maybe they they saw that Expendables 2 didn't maybe make as much as they thought it would, and maybe that's why. But anyway, I'll talk about that more when we get to the third one. But I really do like Expendables 2. I, I like Billy the Kid. I do wish maybe we got like one other newer character, but aside from that, I, I did like the movie. It was a it was a fun movie. I liked the different locations. Um, Belon was a solid bad guy. I think it was interesting to see Jean Claude Van Damme as a villain because he, he's usually the hero in the like pretty much all of his movies. He's the hero, so it was interesting to see him as a bad guy. Um, and I thought the other guy was a solid villain too. He's a little bit of an antagonist for uh, Lee. You know, even like that little dynamic where he forces Lee because Lee just throws the box at him. And he basically forces, like, no, you gotta hand it to me, like, fucking, like, a man. And, like, and it was, like, building, like, I can't wait to see these two. Fun. And the fight was pretty good. It was pretty, you know, he gets fucked up, gets fucking head chopped off, but by the propellers of the helicopter. I said, Rudder, sorry, propellers. Yeah. But this continues the story really well. Um, I thought the new characters, Maggie and, uh, and, um, uh, Billy were pretty good additions, even though Billy dies pretty early, but it was a fun movie. I would recommend it if you like the first Expendables, and um, I would say watch this one. This one continues the story really well, and it's cool to see Stallone, not, I keep saying Stallone, I meant to say, I mean to say Schwarzenegger and Willis actually be part of the story, because, yeah, Mr. Um, Church and Trench kind of fuck off in the first movie. You see him in that one scene, and they're just kind of gone. So it's actually kind of cool to see them actually interact and have some... Because uh, there's even a scene where it's just the three of them taking people out because essentially those are the, I would call, the trinity of action movies. Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Willis. I would pretty much say those are the action trinity, essentially. I would call them that. So 
it was cool to see them have a, a scene again. And Chuck Norris was a fun little addition. And he did the whole scene where he talked about how, like, he got bit by a rattlesnake. He talked about five days of pain, and then the rattlesnake died playing on the whole Chuck Norris memes. It's fucking great. I love this movie. So, and I was happy to see it in theaters. I kind of, I still wish I saw the first one, but we'll see about Expendables 3. I'm going to try to watch the director's cut because, or the, because the, the director's cut or unrated cut, eat both work. Um, it's essentially the R-rated cut where they get, I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to release it PG-13. I don't know why. I don't know if they thought it would get them more money, but these action stars are literally all known for R-rated franchises. I mean, Arnold's, all his big ones are R-rated. Salone's pretty much the same. Rocky, I think even Rock, Rocky's the only one that's, and that's mainly because that's a boxing movie. But Rambo, Cobra, I think Tango Cash is R-rated. Like, most of his other stuff is R-rated. The Rocky movies are the only one that's like PG. But, um, but yeah, everyone else, the, all Statham's big stuff are R-rated. I don't understand why they thought, good idea, let's make it PG. Even, like, any, that was the one where they finally bring in Wesley Snipes, which, that was cool. Because apparently, like, he was actually supposed to be Hail Caesar originally. He was originally eyed for Hail Caesar, which is Terry Crews' role. But he had the whole tax stuff at the time, which, which I hate that they hit and held that against him. Taxation stuff. And, um... But yeah, because of that, he couldn't. But it's cool that he does come back. But it's another one. He's All his big stuff is R-rated. Like, all of it. I don't understand why they thought it was a good idea to make that PG-13. But I'll talk about that more when we get to it. But I've not seen this one. I think I've seen a part of it. Because I, I do remember seeing Ronda Rousey. Because she was another addition. Which, she makes sense. She was kind of big at the time. You know, she was still seen as, like, the big female MMA fighter. So it made sense. But... I'll talk about that more when we get to there. Tomorrow, I am reviewing Wayne's World 2, 